We're back with Bunky, we're going to be rocking the coolest cross-dresser in the galaxy. Let's look at the N7 Slayer. Um, was it ever up for debate whether this guy was gold or platinum worthy? Because, you know, he shouldn't have been. He's got a lot of cool tricks up his sleeve. I'm going to show you those in the gameplay. Let me show you how to build him now, though. Biotic Charge is going to actually be a power focus, okay? You still want Radius for the first evolution, but you want power synergy for the next one. It'd be really cool if he had melee synergy, to be honest, guys. This is going to be a melee build. But unfortunately, only the Krogan Vanguard got that evolution, which is crazy. This guy's got a wicked melee. Uh, I'll get more into it later. But then, you know, back to normal. Take the barrier evolution in for the last one in uh, Biotic Charge. Now, here's the Phase Disruptor. This is a cool power. It's even cooler nowadays, but it's always been pretty cool. Um, this is how I recommend you put this together. I go with damage for the first evolution. I really don't care much for the extra radius. I don't, I've never felt it necessary, and especially now, uh, because for the next evolution, I actually go with the efficient blast. Okay, this used to be, allow you to get uh, three shots off of this because uh, it, like Nova, it actually uses up your barrier, um, and you could only used to be able to get like three shots off. But now you can get five, and uh, that is awesome. Okay, that is really cool. I don't like knockdown. Um, Especially now that we can get five shots off of the efficient blast evolution, but I've never liked knockdown. Okay, I don't really care for that mechanic of uh, you know taking the enemy off their feet. Um, it not because it throws off your shots, it throws off your friend's shots, it, and this move hits it staggers. Sorry, with like every hit, so it's not really necessary. You are really throwing away some great potential if you don't go with the efficient blast evolution. But for the final one, I'm going to take armor damage, and so uh, I'm going to be using this to take out my bosses and stuff. I don't bother with Biotic Slash, guys. This is the Biotic version of Electrical Slash. It is exactly the same move with some Biotic properties slapped on top of it. You know, it's got the same stupid wind-up. It shakes up everybody's screen. It, you know, it leaves you incredibly vulnerable, so you're sort of forced to just spam it through walls. You know, outside of farming, this is a really crappy move, to be honest. Um... I mean, it's nice that you can get some biotic explosions off for you and, well, for your teammates, to be perfectly honest. But, you know, we got charged, so we can do that anyway. You don't need this. It is, you know, it's got the whole sounding like a phantom thing. It's an annoying move. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's just an annoying move. It's annoying to use, and it's annoying to be on the uh, on the receiving end of it as well. Uh, if you, you know, but, you know, that's me. You know, I'm, it's not fair for me to sort of force my opinions on you guys. If you did want to rock biotic slash, this is what I'd recommend. Go with damage for the first evolution, then take detonate for the next evolution, and then you probably want range. Okay, that's an amazing 30 meters. So, you know, you can pretty much just hide behind some wall and throw that thing across the map and uh, steal the kills and uh, wreck team morale. So, you know, go ahead and do that if you feel like it. For the N7 Slayer, though, it's a power bill, guys, and go with a damaging capacity and power damage. I used to take these last six points and get uh, three ranks into Biotic Slash, but much like Electrical Slash, guys, I just found I never used it, so now I rock the weapon damage. And uh, for fitness, okay, I take melee damage for the first evolution, but then I take shield recharge for the next one. I don't bother with martial artists just because his heavy melee really isn't good, whereas his light melee is actually fantastic. I'll get more into that into the gameplay, but uh, the shield recharge is really going to help us out with the uh, phase disruptor. Uh, but the, for the final evolution, I do take the power synergy. Uh, I mean, we're not going to get the extra power damage, unfortunately, just because we're not going to do the heavy melee. Or at least I don't recommend you do, um, but it does give us the extra 30% melee damage, which is nice. <laughs> okay. And that's the build. Let's uh, look at the weapons here. I'm sticking on the uh, Acolyte on this guy. It's going to be very similar to what I was doing with the Phoenix Vanguard, guys. It's all about stripping the shields, going in and wrecking up the place. I'm sticking the Pistol Stunner on it again. I'm also going to be rocking the uh, Power Magnifier. And then uh, my secondary weapon that you can take. You don't have to take one. Uh, it's Better for Platinum, to be honest, to have a secondary sort of armor chewing gun. You don't really need it for gold, but I just take it anyway because it's it's not really affecting me too much. I mean, I, the only thing I need to get a recharge speed on is charge, and it's pretty good with these two guns. I'm rocking the Blood Pack Punisher. Unfortunately, guys, I'm not going to bring it out at all in the gameplay. Just like I said, you don't really need it in gold. Um, but I do stick on the high velocity barrel and the power magnifier on this as well, okay? And it's uh, something you can switch to to uh, you know help you take down uh, armor targets. Um, 
that's pretty much it. The only time I'll really whip her out in gold, though, is to just sort of get through a guardian shield. Uh, but as I showed you, like, with the uh, Fortress Soldier, I didn't show you, I told you about it. You can actually uh, sort of get round a guardian shield with the Acolyte, because it's got a nice area of effect. So you can just sort of shoot round the side... You'll hit the uh, uh, you'll hit the guardian. He's going to throw a shield in the end, and you can sort of just charge in and wreck him. To be perfectly honest, but you know it is good for platinum because the armor's a bit bulkier there. Doesn't hurt to carry it around for gold though, guys. <laughs> like I'm going to be doing. Uh, the equipment though, I'm going to be rocking disruptor rounds for this. Get myself some nice little tech bursts, very similar to what I was doing with the Phoenix Vanguard, and then for the armor bonus. Sorry, I'm going to be going with a power amplifier. And the gear bonus is going to be the Juggernaut Shields. It is a melee build, guys. It is a melee build. And then finally, the weapon bonus is actually going to be a Strength Enhancer 2. Uh, yeah, since I hope you guys remember the Phoenix Vanguard, I have not seen a Strength Enhancer 3 since then. Okay, The game just does not give them to me. So yeah, I'm stuck with a Strength Enhancer, which is really annoying because my next video is a melee build as well. But um, that's the next video. Let's jump into the gameplay for this one. Let's go then. I'm starting up a game with uh, Dominoes and Explicit Reality here. Uh, unknown, unknown gold. Unfortunately, Dominoes is not going to be joining us. It's just going to be me and Explicit, to be perfectly honest. Dominoes is going to be hit with uh, the dreaded Waiting for the Players screen. I don't know if you guys have had the misfortune of that. Basically, a black screen with that little message box up. Don't wait for it, guys. You're not getting in. Yeah, you just hit the cancel button, get out and try and sort of uh, rejoin, because that thing will never load. You're never going to see the other players, uh, and that's what Dom is going to see, unfortunately, as soon as this game starts up. And, you know, we got the pug in with us, so the, it was a public lo uh, lobby, so, um, you know, we could fill up the fourth spot there, and, unfortunately, as soon as Dom jumps out, it's going to be filled up by a, yet another pug, so... Yeah, it's going to be me explicit for the gameplay. <laughs> uh, and it's Reactor uh, versus Reapers. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think I'm getting Reactor a lot for these video guys. I'm sorry about that. Um, gameplay is a gameplay, but, but uh, I'm so I don't mean to be showing you the same maps. I really don't. But uh, let's talk about the N7 Shadow. Okay, the N7 Shadow is a lot like the Phoenix Vanguard, okay, I'm rocking the uh, Acolyte, I'm charging that up, spotting an enemy, stripping his shield, setting him up for a tech burst. I charge in, I detonate said tech burst, and then I melee them to death. Although, I'm going to be honest, a lot of them are just sort of taken out by that tech burst. It, it's really, it, the Acolyte is really great for the job, I mean, you, you strip the shields of an enemy you're planning on charging and make them real soft, they go flying after that. But uh, his, light me his melees are just incredible. But it is his light melee, okay? His heavy melee is actually pretty clumsy, to be honest. It's um, it's a combination between the N7 Shadows and the N7 Furies. You, it's essentially it's the same strike that the Shadow does, but they've sort of wedged in the whole teleportation thing that the uh, Fury does when she does her heavy melee. She sort of just flies at the enemy and explodes, whereas this character flies in at the enemy and does the N7 Shadows strike, you know? And it's it's it's... It is. It's, uh, the only word I can really think of is it's clumsy. <laughs> I'm going to break off for a second, though, just to let you all know the reason Explicit Reality died here is because he was trying to invite Dom back into the game. I uh, promised him I'd make that very clear. My friends don't like being shown up in these videos. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're not going to get Dom back because we've already got a new pug in, I think. But, no, let me get back onto why this heavy melee really isn't what I recommend for this build. Because with that, you know, with that sort of teleportation thing... Uh, it's a, it's a real guessing game. You don't really know the distance on it. I think I've read somewhere that it's seven meters, but um, sometimes I've done it and I've moved an inch, and then other times I've gone miles with it. It's really unpredictable, so you know, you'll know you be lucky if you hit to begin with, and whether you do or don't, you're going to be left incredibly vulnerable, because just like with the N7 Shadows, you're, you, when the character sort of lunges forward, it takes them a little while, a second or two, to get their footing again, or to stand upright, and uh, in that space of time, the enemy can absolutely gun you down. Whereas the light melee, on the other hand, is like on the opposite side of the scales. In fact, when you're doing the light melee, the damage reduction is immense, okay? It's near invincibility, guys. Uh, it's really, really awesome. <laughs> it is. Uh, the only thing that's really going to take you out is if the enemy sort of staggers you. Um, 
but you can quickly rectify the situation because you're the vanguard. So, you know, you get staggered back, you charge back in, and you rinse and repeat. You can take out huge groups of enemies uh, just one by one, uh, just sort of charging in, doing three melees, charging in, doing another three melees. In fact, you can even take out bosses like the primes with that stuff because, uh, <laughs> he, you know, he's got no sync kill, so you can just afford to just be up in his face, just slashing at him, uh, uh, ripping him to pieces. Um, he, he'll, he'll try and knock you back with the legendary people elbow, but you just charge back in and you keep going because he cannot gun you down. Uh, gunfire is not going to take you out when you're in that light melee cycle. I don't know what the figure is. I don't know if it is actual invincibility, but uh, you are not going down when you're doing that light melee cycle. So yeah, that's really what you want for this um, for this character. I mean, I'll be honest, it's not the hardest hit in melee. Uh, nothing he does is particularly hard hitting, but it's fast, guys, and it staggers with every hit. So you just lock up enemies with it. So you can literally just sort of charge in and melee uh, everything to death. <laughs> you really can. But though, uh, things like this, now we're dealing with banshees and stuff, I actually start rocking the phase disruptor for these guys. Uh, that's why I've got the armor piercing evolution on it. I mean, I've got the acolyte, so I don't really need to worry about sh stripping shields, because I can pretty much do that with a gun. Um, it's it's not a, it's not a good armor killer, though, okay? It, um, it, as much as it's got the whole 75% increase to it... Nothing this character does hits hard, and I think that's why a lot of people uh, think he's not like gold or platinum worthy. The thing is, though, he just strikes uh, incredibly fast, uh, and he can do it very often. So, you know, so that's basically what you need. You just need to just sort of get in and just whittle down uh, quickly, because. Uh, he doesn't hit hard, but it is still a good way of taking down the bosses. Um, it's it's like an it's like Nova. Okay, you do you're firing off your barrier, but um, confusingly, uh, it's not like Nova because it's not actually a biotic attack. It's only a combat attack. It will not detonate biotics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it won't. It'll, it'll detonate tech. You can get tech explosions, but you will not detonate any biotic explosions with it, which is kind of maddening. I remember before I unlocked the character when Earth DLC first came out, that's really what I thought. Uh, from what I was seeing, that's really what I thought the power was going to be, which I didn't think was too much of a stretch of the imagination. It, it hits. Uh, it doesn't hit as hard as Nova, but then you've got the distance, so that's what I thought it was, like a long-range Nova. But it, it's not. Um, <laughs> it isn't, unfortunately. But it is a good. But you know, it's quite cool because he's also got the N Seven Fury's uh, move. Can I say the word maneuverability? Okay, so you can. You, he's got all the same evasive moves. You can just sort of teleport um, away from a situation and through walls and all that kind of good stuff. You can get around the map incredibly cool with this character. Obviously, with the biotic charge and look at that. See, I've just jumped in the middle of two ravengers. They could have just gooed the crap out of me, but I'm just in, I'm in and I'm out in a situation. And, when, and with one evasive maneuver backwards puts me in a nice distance to just sort of start, start hammering them with the phase disruptor. And that's what you can do with the bosses, guys. You just uh, you sort of charge into them. You, you can hit them five times with the phase disruptor, and uh, then you just pull, and then you just charge back in, pull back out, and hit them five times again with the phase disruptor. So you do just everything he, this character is about is just about whittling down. I do also recommend you do rock the phase disruptor for stuff like the uh, the Ravenger here, because <laughs> you don't want to be up in his face meddling him, because that goo will eat you alive. But you know you can. That's the thing you can do. Like you can you can pull out. But he he might bust his sack as the moment you get up in his face. But you just pull out and you don't feel any of that. Same with the Banshee. Uh, if you can actually charge her while she's still teleporting and just s jump back out and start striking her with this, it, you get around incredibly quick with this character. And that's it. Like this is what I mean. What, what I was talking about in the build. He has just got a lot of great little tricks up his sleeve to, uh, you know, to, to survive and get the damage out. And you know, this. And you just got to take advantage of it. To be honest, guys, you really do. I mean, you'll also see me uh, sort of put in a shot before I start um, using the face disruptor to get a little tech burst off to start things up. Um, you can also just sort of lock up phantoms as well, guys. Obviously, you can just hit with the acolyte stripper shields. Uh, and then you can just whack her with the face. She hates the face disruptor. She locks her up. She can, you can just spam that. That'll take out uh, phantoms really nice. It takes out groups really nice. And obviously, you can whittle down armor with it. Uh, you know, armor targets that you really shouldn't be up close to. You know, things that can sink kill you, like the Banshees and, uh, you know, uh, Praetorians and all that kind of stuff. To be honest, like a Geth Prime, I'm probably just going to light melee to death. <laughs> like all of the Geth, you can just sort of melee to death. But um, with the Reaper, well, every other faction, essentially, guys, you can just sort of uh, pull out and start hitting them with the Phase Disruptor. He's, uh, you know, because of the way the face disruptor is, so he's actually always going to, this character's actually better with a tech team than the biotic team, just because you can obviously get off the tech explosions. Um, 
I mean, the only way you're going to get off a biotic explosion is with charge, or if you uh, decide to go with biotic slash. Which is, it is disappointing. I am disappointed by that um, feature, but what are you going to do? <laughs> the face uh, up is still pretty kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, so let's, uh, let's talk about some of the choices and stuff. Obviously, I'm rocking the Acolytes because I'm doing the sort of same show that I was doing with the Phoenix. Okay, so take down their shields, set up that exter that tech burst, and then charge in and actually detonate it. Uh, you can obviously go with... There's plenty of other pistols that can do that job. Uh, you can go with the Scorpion because that's really reliable for setting up an explosion with, as soon as you stick them with the ammo. And the Talon, of course. The Talon's really good because it's got the bonus damage to the uh, shields and barriers. So you can take down the shields and actually get them all primed up and ready to go. So you can just sort of, uh, you know, just blow up everything with that much. I've also got the uh, Blood Pack Punisher as my secondary weapon. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to be whipping out for this game just because I don't need to, unfortunately. But it, it's, um, to be honest, in gold, I whip it out to just sort of get round a guardian shield, or get through a guardian shield, rather. But it is kind of nice for things like platinum, okay? Uh, so you can just sort of uh, throw in some extra uh, armor damage while you're sort of phase disrupting and stuff, whittle down st uh, bosses faster, because that's what platinum is, guys. You've just got bigger health bars, so you just want to kind of be putting more damage out, and you can do that with a nice secondary weapon like the Blood Pack Punisher. But any of the SMGs are going to work as well, guys, because you do want to sort of have that power magnifier, I recommend, on there, so you can your face disrupt the hurts when you're throwing it out there. So, you know, collector SMG, Tempest, Hurricane, it's all good stuff. But you know you can just go, you can go with the sort of one weapon uh, thing, rock a nice a nice light shotgun. You still do want to be light. You want to be able to do your biotic charge and sort of uh, you know dance around the enemy like I am doing here. Rake's a really good one, and the piranha would be another. Uh, you can obviously stick the omni blade on both of those and you know do some really nice melee damage. The equipment's obviously the disruptor, so I can get the tech off. But mainly, it's I do. You want elemental ammo, guys. I, you, fire would be better because the fire explosions are better. You also can, that'll also help you take out armor, you know, vastly superior. You can get cryo as well. They can do some cryo bursts now and again. I mean, I've, I've, like I said before, the cryo ammo is a really unreliable source for cryo explosions. It really is. Um, but you do, you can, if you want, <laughs> you can get cryo explosions as well. All they need to so you get past there. Um, the armor bonus is obviously the power ramp because <laughs> well, look at that Ravenger I don't know how he got there uh, you do want the power ramp because this is what we're doing we're just going around sort of throwing our shields at the enemy so our survivability is literally in the melee attack and the biotic charge you can go with the cyclonic though because uh, it's uh, it's it's not a st any kind of stretch of the imagination to get staggered by an enemy and actually find yourselves surrounded by a lot more enemies than you expected and they will gun you down in that very instant and you might not be able to get your charge off in time. So something like the Cyclonic Modulator is decent, probably better for a Platinum situation, but I do actually recommend the Power Ramp over it just so you can do more damage because uh, it, it's a lot of whittling you've got to do with the N7 Slayer. The key is obviously the uh, the juggernaut shield in that respect. Okay, guys, um, I do I went for, I want the melee damage, but I do kind of want some I do want better shields just in case I am caught off guard like that. I got a better chance of being able to charge in time to survive that kind of scenario. But um, you kind of want those uh, you want those melee amps uh, like the martial biotic amp. Okay, we are the martial biotic. Although really, it's only going to be your charge that benefits from the uh, you know the biotic power increase because you know face disrupt is. A combat ability, unfortunately. Uh, hydraulic joints might be a better uh, option in that in that respect because you that gives you the most uh, melee damage as far as the gears go. And you know, there's also the berserker package as well because uh, in case you wanted to rock one of the shotguns I mentioned, so you can get the shotgun and melee damage there. Um, you know, you tell you what you could do. Um, you could rock the. This would actually be a, a genuine time to rock the Batarian Gauntlet. Um, I've always kind. Of, I, as far as I'm concerned, the Batarian Gauntlet is kind of gimmicky. I mean, the Batarian Heavy Melee is really cool. It, it is, uh, but not everybody needs to do it. However, this is actually a character where having that melee would genuinely benefit him. Uh, in fact, I got myself a little excited. Uh, that could be great. Because his have because you know with those uh, sort of fitness evolutions, things like the martial artist and the power synergy, if you could actually you know work a really good melee, uh, you'd be able to make all your other melee attacks, you know your light melee and your face disrupt and all that kind of good stuff. You can make it stronger, uh, and you know 
the Batarian heavy melee gives you like a, a damage reduction s- similar to your your light melee. So you just you'd have you'd be basically rocking two very similar uh, melee attacks, but it would all just synergize really well. So yeah, okay, guys, this would actually be a fantastic way uh, a character to start rocking that Batarian gauntlet with. Because um, otherwise, from uh, pretty much everybody else I can think of, it's mainly just fun. <laughs> Now, see, there's going to break off. Did you see that? That was what I'm talking about, guys, with the whole sort of charging in and just teleporting out with, a, with an evasive move. I can do that. It was uh, sort of um, <laughs> brought down then by being gunned down by the Marauders, but you, you can actually get away with it. Um, it's still risky, though, guys. Be aware, okay? Uh, especially on, like, Platinum. Uh, if the Banshee so chooses to, she can absolutely pick you up in that moment you're in front of her, but you've got a better chance of uh, pulling off a little trick like that with this character than anybody else. You can just charge in, pull back out, and start smacking her with the phase disruptor. Um, but no, uh, the Batarian Gauntlet, let's get back on that. Uh, for everyone else, it's it's mainly just funny, to be honest. Uh, something that my friends have done, and uh, I know, and I've, I've given it a go. It's just sticking the Batarian Gauntlet on the Fallers Vanguard, okay, just going around. Um, but being like a, a, a like a baby Batarian Vanguard, it's kind of funny. It's definitely not the best choice to do, but, you know, for this character, that could genuinely benefit you. So, you know, that's, that's definitely uh, a gear worth considering, guys. So sticking on the Batarian Gauntlet, getting the heavy mel... It's basically you charge in... You get the heavy melee kill first, and then you just go back to this, and everything's stronger for it, though. At the moment, um, you know, once the time's up, you just do it again. So, yeah. <laughs> Batarian Gauntlet just got me, uh, got me thinking, but you can do that. Uh, the other gear, though, you probably want to, you can probably just make your power damage uh, stronger if you don't want to have too much of a melee focus. Go with something with a mental focus, okay, guys? You don't really want to be wasting your time with the adaptive war ramp because, you know, it's, your main hitting attack is uh, not a biotic attack. You don't really, th- charge isn't really used for killing, okay? It's about uh, surviving and getting stronger. It's a buff, to be perfectly honest, the charge rather than a killer. So, you know, if you really want to get the power damage in, pick up a mental focuser uh, for your gear. And then, you know, there's still the shield options, guys. Uh, you can always pick up a shield to survive those, uh, you know, those ugly situations where you get staggered off your feet and start getting gunned down and stuff. Uh, then the weapon bonus is going to be the Strength Enhancer. I mean, hopefully you're luckier than I am and you've got Strength Enhancer 3s because that's what you want, guys. Just sort of uh, get one of those on you. <sighs> now, I'm going to bring up the elephant in the room here, okay, guys? Yeah, this guy is Kay Lang with a helmet on. <laughs> I think most people have uh, recognised the model. That was uh, true of um, Earth in general. That won it. There was uh, most of the uh, the uh, well, all of the Earth characters was uh, basically a recycled uh, armour from the single player campaign. <laughs> it's it, it's. I'm not saying I, I've got nothing against that. I mean, why wouldn't they just use that? It's it's, it's armor, so someone's going to wear it <laughs> for the war situation. But this one, there, rather than uh, an armor that you could play uh, using the game, this was actually um, the enemy K Lang from the storylines, you know, body uh, here. They just put up like a motorcycle helmet on him. <laughs> what did you guys think of K Lang uh, for the storyline? Uh, me personally, I really uh, thought the character was well out of place for the Mass Effect series. It, you know, his whole, um, you know, it, who he was was like really kind of far too Metal Gear Solidy for my liking. <laughs> you know, he looked like a Metal Gear Solid character. <laughs> oh. That was upsetting. That happened to me a couple of times in this game, actually. Um, I, I charge a brute, and then his attack makes me stagger into him, so I can have taken a damn sight more damage than I really should have. So if I'm getting hit from the front, I should be knocked backwards, not in forwards into him. But, you know, what are you going to do? But no, let me get back onto, like, Kai Lang. Uh, because it, it, the whole... Everything about him was just kind of... Uh, sort of Misplaced, I think. Uh, you know, I did. It's, it's, I didn't. It wasn't so much that I disliked the character. I kind of liked the banter between him and Shepard, and you know, he was, you know, he was the sort of nemesis, your like rival for the series and stuff. But the whole thing, going, you know, the the cyber ninja angle. Okay, there's, you know, it's that whole thing. It's it's that kind of I exist in another man's arm, stupid science. Which you know, Mass Effect was, you know had stronger science for the main part you know space magic aside (laughs) 
I, I, I didn't, I didn't, li- I don't like it. I mean, <laughs> let's let's face it. What a major step backwards in combat efficiency. Uh, to, you know, go around using samurai swords again. It, you know, this is this is a world full of lasers and psychic space magic. Who okayed the the sharp metal stick again? <laughs> you know, you know, it's a, it's a lot of somebody like a, a military, de- uh, you know, development department. Just they're going, going. Remember swords? They were cool. Yeah, swords were cool. Should we start doing swords again? Well, you know, we got lasers now. No, let's use swords again. It, it just seems a bit stupid. I I don't really sort of buy into it. Mind you, it's probably the same development that uh, decided to uh, channel raw space bending energy into whips. You know. Who thought that was a good idea? Like the Phoenix guys, that, that, that's another crazy concept. I mean, if you're going to like take biotics and craft them into a weapon, uh, at least something that isn't so easy to lose control of as a whip. But you know, that's just me over analysing things. But you know, you do because uh, that, that that's something that's really really got me into the Mass Effect series. Actually, I'm not a sci-fi person to be honest. There's very few sci-fi franchises that I take any interest in. Um, but what I loved about Mass Effect is that the universe, for the most part, was actually incredibly well realized, and I just sort of got, I just got, I sucked it all in. I loved it. It all really, it had such such a backbone that I could, I just bought into it. But then characters like that, Kay Leng and stuff like that, it's like he he felt like a cameo as opposed to he didn't feel like he belonged there. And um, as fun as all these sword characters are. It's kind of ridiculous at the same time. You would have thought at least like an omni sword, you know. <laughs> at least uh, you know we got we got we got guys rocking a cr- bringing bows and arrows into this uh, this time now, no, but you know at least they're omni. It's, it's always okay as long as it's omni. <laughs> but yeah, that's um. I've only got I only got time to uh, chat all this kind of drivel because we're on extraction now, and I've pretty much shown you how to play the Slayer. Uh, he is a really good character, guys. Uh, he's a lot of fun as well, and he yes, he is platinum ready. Okay, it is uh, you basically you just got to strike fast and strike often, and you know there's plenty of ways to do it. He's got incredible survivability. In it's all it's all lodged into his melee attack, his biotic charge, and his evasive. It, it actually it all really does uh, gel and synergize well on this character. He's a he's a nice, um, it's a really nice concept, and he is fun to play. I mean, he's even better to play now, guys. Uh, after since the efficient. Uh, Efficient blast buff. Okay, when you were when you had three of them, it was cool. But five on them is actually really, really good. You know, cause there was a lot of targets that you just could not take out in, in a single charge uh, sort of time frame. But now you can because now you can hit five times. It's uh, it's it's nice. <laughs> It is. Look, it, that is it, guys. You can see it's, you just sort of you just dance around the enemies and just whittle them down. That is that is the uh, my best way to sum up the uh, N7 Slayer. And just because you don't, um, just because you don't take down the enemy in like a single strike, does not mean that you're doing bad damage. Okay, it's it's damage per second is a very different thing from you know just damage you know because he he does get he has got good damage per second the scoreboard is going to be up here now i'm going to score pretty nicely with the guy and i I've, and i've scored higher than this before but you know so don't worry that uh, you know you, you hit the enemy down once and he didn't die just hit him again and that's the n7 slayer though guys okay i think i've stressed that enough <laughs> But yeah, here you go, guys. There's the scoreboard. Uh, Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, I'll keep them coming. Okay, guys, take care of yourselves.